Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Fox News' Bill O'Reilly has taken to the airwaves to defend himself against mounting evidence that he fabricated details of his experiences while covering the 1982 Falklands War. But by focusing on these allegations put forward by Mother Jones's David Korn, a much larger and more important story is amiss, says our next guest, Greg Grandin. And that is how Bill O'Reilly and the U.S. media, and especially the U.S. government, helped cover up the massacre of hundreds by U.S.-backed death squads in El Salvador during the Civil War. Earlier this month, Greg Grandin, a columnist for The Nation magazine, found evidence that O'Reilly, who in 1982 was a foreign correspondent for CBS Nightly News, may have deliberately ignored the massacre of hundreds of people by U.S.-backed death squads in El Mozoto, El Salvador, thus helping deflect attention from war crimes backed by the United States. Now joining us to shed light on this is Greg Grandin. Thank you so much for joining us, Greg. Thanks for having me on. So, Greg, what evidence do you have that Bill O'Reilly failed to report the facts related to the massacre? Well, we have the clip. We have the report itself. I mean, he, in his memoir, in the same memoir that is causing a lot of the controversy about his, you know, some of his bragging and and uh, and exaggerations about the Falkland, uh, before he went off to Argentina, before he went to Buenos Aires to to cover or not cover the Falklands War, he was in El Salvador. He was sent to El Salvador by the CBS bureau chief to report and uh, and investigate. Uh, a massacre, and that, that massacre was the El Mazote massacre. It happened in December 1981. It was committed by a U.S. created and trained uh, battalion, the Atlacat Battalion of the Salvadoran military, and it, uh, it resulted in the death of impalement, decapitation, really horrible, horrible mutilations of over 800 villages in a small little town called El Mazote near the Honduran border. It broke on the front page of the Washington Post and the front page of the New York Times. New York Times was covered by, uh, reported on by Ray Bonner. Ray Bonner walked in from Honduras to get to the town in December. Um, and he was fairly clear in his reporting early on that it was the Salvadoran military. And and, um, and Bill O'Reilly said he was sent down to investigate it. And he didn't go to El Mazote. He went to the, the next town over. And it's kind of the equivalent of, 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 of Cy Hirsch, Seymour Hirsch, in the 1960s, in Vietnam, heard about the My Lai massacre and decided to investigate the next village over. That's exactly what Bill O'Reilly did. It seems like he was flown in on a on a Salvadoran military helicopter, even though in his book he exaggerates and he says that he he uh, it seems it's a little bit of a discrepancy how he got there. But that's clear in the in the CBS report that he filed that was broadcast in May 1982 that he was flown in on a helicopter. And he reported on a, on on the town on town uh, next town over in which um, in which he and then he then he said it was unclear who was responsible for the violence, but and it was impossible to tell. It was it was um, it added to the um, Reagan administration, which at the time was was um, engaged in a in a pretty heavy campaign to discredit Raymond Bonner for for reporting on the massacre because this, they were just um, beginning to fund. The Salvadoran military um, and and in its civil war, and um, and the Reagan administration was intent on establishing plausible deniability, and and um, and Bill O'Reilly either intentionally or unintentionally uh, uh, helped in that campaign. Now, Greg, you published your story on O'Reilly on February 9th, but the discussion around O'Reilly's Latin American reporting really took off after Mother Jones' article posted by. Uh, uh, David Korn and Daniel Schulman on February 19th. Now, since that article came out on Mother Jones, you've written that Mother Jones' article really missed the point. Um, how did they miss the point when you made it so clear? Well, I think that Mother Jones and, and, and liberal journalists like David Korn are very invested in establishing a kind of moral superiority over Fox News and the Republicans and the and the wig nut Republican media establishment, and like Fox News, and and, and other and other uh, other out, outlets like you know, Breitbart and whatnot, Rush Limbaugh, and um, you know the real story about about what what Bill O'Reilly did as a foreign correspondent is the way it it, it enabled 
uh, it enabled the, um, the, the, the Reagan administration to deny what actually happened in El Mazote, a U.S. implicated in a, in a war crime. Uh, not whether it's really not that interesting whether Bill O'Reilly lied or didn't lie, or whether he's a conservative Brian Williams. Uh, that's a little bit of bread and circuses. It's a little bit of a, a media firestorm. That you know, Bill O'Reilly is going to survive. He's going to survive, and and, uh, and 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 attention is going to move on. And uh, the the larger importance of the story, uh, how it how it reflects the degeneration of war correspondence and war journalism from Vietnam to the Iraq war is 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 totally missed and you know I mean uh, instead of talking about um, instead of talking about uh, you know it becomes a he said he said uh, uh, controversy between David Korn and Bill O'Reilly and in some ways Bill O'Reilly it's that kind of criticism of O'Reilly and the conservatives that fulfill in, in some ways it do, it's not it's not a challenge it actually is a fulfillment of 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 what O'Reilly represents if O'Reilly represents a deflection away from real reporting right. then yeah. this kind of criticism is the fulfillment of that project right greg some of our audience actually uh, wasn't around and some of them are very young wasn't around uh, during the civil war in el salvador explain the us's involvement uh, in el salvador well Reagan's Central American policy in general was part of his restarting the Cold War, what, what some scholars and critics of U.S. foreign policy call the Second Cold War. Um, Reagan was elected in 1980, came to power in 1981, and he immediately recommitted the U.S. to, to pushing back in the Third World, uh, Afghanistan, the Middle East. But Central America really was a proving ground. He, and they, they, they began to arm the Contras, these anti-communist rebels in Nicaragua. And in El Salvador and Guatemala, it entailed supporting these right-wing death squad governments. Um, and El Mazote, in some ways, was, was, was the first major massacre of the 1980s. So it was in December in 1981. And it really, um, it really if, if, it was, if it had been honestly reported by Bill O'Reilly, it might have changed would have contributed to a deeper discussion about the about the wisdom of 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 funding the Salvadoran military to the tune of about a million and a half dollars a day. Seventy thousand people were killed in El Salvador during the Reagan administration. The, the vast majority, ninety five percent, was at the hands of U.S. trained and funded allies. And um, and and so El Mazote, in some way, was was the inauguration of this. And that that Bill O'Reilly was there, present at the creation, I think, is uh, is, is is illustrative and, and worthy of discussion. A lot more than than, than debate about whether he what, did or didn't see combat in in in, in the Malvinas Falkland War. So, Greg, tell us what is it that actually prompted this investigation about O'Reilly? Well, I actually read a review by somebody named John Dolan of, 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 of uh, O'Reilly's memoir, where he mentions that, that O'Reilly was at El Mazote. I thought that that was an odd, um, you know, it's just a little bit of a disjuncture. And, you know, thanks to Google Books, you're able to kind of search around. And I saw the, the extended discussion, and I was able to find the clip. There's a wonderful archive of broadcast uh, news in Vanderbilt University. And uh, I was able to dig through and, and find the actual clip in May 1982 of O'Reilly's reporting on it and the discrepancy between uh, what he wrote in his memoir and what was what was on that clip was was n noteworthy. Greg Grandin, I want to thank you so much for doing this very important work unraveling this and I thank you for joining us on the Real News Network. Well, thanks so much for having me. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.